What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 GMC Canyon Elevation. Huge thank you to Kai Himes over at Coons Tyson Chevy Buick GMC for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Canyon or any GM product with the exception of Cadillac, then I'll be sure to have Kai's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. It's a beautiful cloudy day today, which makes for perfect filming conditions. So just like usual, first I'm going to talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 GMC Canyon Elevation. And this particular one has been painted in the $495 Desert Sand Metallic, which looks awesome on the Canyon, by the way. But for 2024, the Elevation now gets the 11 inch digital gauge cluster as standard, which on last year's model, it came standard with an eight inch digital gauge cluster. So you get a little upgrade there. But this being the Elevation also as standard, you get LED projector headlights with IntelliBeam as well as LED daytime running lights and LED turn signals. This one just so happens to be optioned with the $1,670 convenience package, which also gives you LED fog lights. But taking a step to the left, this is what the front end of the Canyon looks like. Very menacing. I love the wide body that you get with the elevation. Not only do you get the ultra wide stance, but you also get a factory two inch lift. But starting up here with the grill, you get a mix of gloss black and satin black for your front grill. So these U-shaped pieces here are gloss black and then you can kind of see the backing plate is satin black. You have your GMC logo located at the center of your grill. And then coming down, you get a body color front bumper, a satin black valance. You also get two black painted frame mounted recovery hooks. I also wanted to mention that with this trim level, as mentioned, you do get the two inch factory lift. So you get 9.6 inches of ground clearance total, which is awesome. Very capable out of the box. There is only one kind of neg that you'll see towards the end of this segment. So stay tuned for that. But I do want to mention, you also do get an additional little bit of ground clearance here with these bumper cutouts. Um, so let's say you're approaching a rock, you can basically clear the rock if it's going to go on your tire because you get probably an additional, you know, six inches of clearance here with that bumper cutout. But coming on down the side, you get that satin black front valence and that satin black valence leads into your satin black wheel arch moldings. You also get a light on your wheel arch moldings as well. And then coming down, um, you do get an off-road tuned suspension. And then these are the standard and only wheels you can get with this trim level. And they are 18 inch dark gray painted wheels wrapped in 265, 65 Goodyear Wrangler Territory all-terrain tires. Here's a view of the wheel face. And then here is a view of the tread powder on those tires as well. Take a step back, give you a nice little shot here, and then coming on into our side mirrors. With the elevation, you get these gloss black mirror caps. And as standard, these side view mirrors are manual folding and power adjustable. But with the convenience package, the side view mirrors are heated. And let's say you wanted blind spot monitoring. Well, you are going to have to opt for the $445 safety package. But in order to get that package, you have to opt for the $1,670 convenience package. So in order to get blind spot monitoring, you have to opt for con the convenience package first. But let me give you a little side profile shot of the Canyon. I love the angles that you get. I think GM did a fantastic job, not only with the Canyon, but also with the Colorado. I think they look phenomenal. Again, that comes down to personal preference, but I think they did a fantastic job redesigning this last year. But anyways, you may be able to tell that you do get satin black window trim as well as body color door handles with keyless access. Just keep in mind though, the keyless access function is only on your front two door handles. The rear two door handles do not get the keyless access function. And then also only on your front two doors is where you'll find your silver elevation badging. But working my way towards the back end, you get a capless filler neck behind here. All you gotta do is press on that and this will open up and 87 octane will do you just fine. Up top here, you get your black antenna. You have your cargo lights that are halogen as well as your third brake light. And with the convenience package, you get the manual sliding rear window with the rear window defogger. 
So if you want the sliding rear window, I do, that is one of my negs. That's not the neg that I was referring to earlier in the video, but I do wish that if you're gonna pay for the convenience package, I think you should um, you know, have a power sliding rear window. You also don't get a power sliding rear window on the Denali, which in my opinion is absolutely crazy. The Honda Ridgeline comes with a power sliding rear window. Get GM, get your stuff together. Uh, also, you do get a leaf spring suspension back here as well as a solid rear axle, obviously. And then you also get the chrome 4x4 badging. If you get four wheel drive, those badges are going to cost you 3300 bucks. But here is a little rear three quarter shot. LED taillights come standard and then take in a step to the left. Here is a booty shot. So obviously you get your tailgate release handle here. That is where you will find your backup camera. And a couple things you get with the convenience package back here include the key cylinder lock, which is what that is there. You also do get the easy lift power lock and release tailgate, as well as the tailgate storage and a 120 volt bed outlet. So you can see all your badging back here. And if you open this thing up, you can see it comes down nice and slow. You get a little like mountainous, um, you know, terrain kind of thing right there and then it's also very very easy to lift up as well that's why they call it the easy lift tailgate and if you pop this to the left you pop this to the right you get a little bit of storage space down in here <coughs> you may be able to tell it is not totally watertight so just be mindful of that when you set some items down in here but this is the tailgate storage that you get when you opt for the convenience package on the elevation and that is where you'll find the 120 volt bed outlet you also get two die two tie down hooks in each corner for a total of eight tie down hooks and if you wanted the spray in bed liner this one has not been optioned with that well you are going to have to pay an additional 495 bucks for the spray in bed liner and then last but not least i believe this is a yardstick goes all the way up to 48 inches so you can measure your fish there if you wanted to and then coming down obviously just like the front the back mimics the front so you do get a body color rear bumper but you do get the corner step rear bumper which makes it a little bit easier to access what you need to in the bed you just grab onto there or put your foot there grab onto here grab what you need to makes things very easy you get that on both sides um, one thing though is that you do not get a trailer hitch with this thing which I think is kind of interesting However, if you wanted four parking sensors back here, you would have to opt for the safety plus package um, But finishing things off here at the back end I wanted to mention this one has been optioned with the $325 auto locking rear differential you get a spare tire as standard which is located here and then coming to my neg is that the elevation comes standard with a single speed transfer case. I think if you're gonna get a truck, and I guess maybe you're not, not everybody's gonna be towing, but you may be towing sometimes. I think this should absolutely come standard with a two speed transfer case. That's just my personal opinion. You can let me know your opinion in the comments down below. But you also do get a 342 rear axle ratio. The max payload capacity is 1,548 pounds and the max tow capacity is 7,700 pounds. So this is a very, very capable little truck. Uh, I wouldn't say little truck, I'd say mid mid-sized truck. But it is little, you know, when you compare it to a 1500 series truck or a 2500 series truck. However, take a look at this thing. It looks awesome. It looks beefy. Love the way it drives. Um, and again, with a 7700 pound max tow capacity, this should absolutely come with a two speed transfer case. Let me know your opinions on that in the comments down below. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the 2.7 liter turbo four cylinder that makes 310 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. It is mated to an eight speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in six seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 18 miles per gallon in the city, 22 miles per gallon on the highway for 19 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive. If you wanted four wheel drive, that is going to cost you an additional $3,300 over real wheel drive. The elevation is the only Canyon trim level that does not come with four wheel drive as standard. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, if you've learned anything from the video thus far, please take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. 
Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you get keyless access as standard. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, press this button right here, and it will unlock. You can press that very same button again, and it will lock back up. This is what the key fob looks like. It's mostly satin black. However, you do get that chrome accent strip there. And then going over the functions on the key fob, you have your lock function, your unlock function, your panic function, and then this one being optioned with the $1,670 convenience package. You also get remote start. And in order to remote start the vehicle, all you have to do is press this button twice and she'll fire up. And that is what the Turbo 4 sounds like being fired up from the exterior's perspective. But now let's see what the interior of this particular elevation has to offer. So this one has been specced with the jet black cloth interior. They also do have an optional jet black Cortec interior. But in order to get that, you have to opt for the $4,000 elevation premium package. The elevation premium package is like $1,700, I believe. But in order to get that, you have to add another about two thousand dollars worth of options in order to get the premium package that's why i say it is a four thousand dollar option but we're going to start with our driver's side door panel first and basically up top here you get some satin black plastic you're unlocking your lock functions your chrome looking door handle you get some faux leather right here with some accent colored stitching you have your side view mirror controls you get an automatic up and down driver window all the other windows are automatic down only you also get a spot right here you could set your phone as well as a water bottle down here and you also get a speaker on the door panel. Now as standard with the elevation you get manually adjustable front seats and those are your seat adjustments there. There is one package you can get uh, and you get basically power front seats and they are also heated. I'll put that on screen now but stepping on into the interior you can feel the two inch lift when stepping into the interior but it's not that big of a deal. We're gonna close that door. We're gonna see what is new for 2024. So now to the elevation or on the elevation as standard, you get an 11 inch digital gauge cluster, which in 2023 as standard, you get an eight inch digital gauge cluster, but they gave the 11 inch not only to the elevation, but also to the AT4 as standard. And clicking on that button right there is gonna give me full access into everything here on both of these screens. So we're gonna start over here with the controls and basically I'm just gonna walk you throughout the entire interior. So scrolling up on this is going to brighten your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons and then scrolling down is going to dim your gauge cluster as well as your backlit buttons. Popping this is obviously for popping open your hood. And then with the convenience package, you get a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel where normally if you did not get the convenience package, it would be a manual tilting only steering wheel. So if you flip that down, basically what I mean, the telescoping is you can push the steering wheel away from you. You can bring the steering wheel towards you and obviously tilting is tilting up and down. Again, the telescoping part comes with the convenience package. Now when you're comfortable, you just lock it back into position. And now let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like here on the Canyon. And not only is this your turn signal control stock, this is also your windshield wiper control stock. So you press on that, you're basically just gonna get one wipe. If you double click on it, you get the washer function. Now, zooming back out, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on the Canyon. And then on the back side of the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you have your tuning controls. And on the back side of the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you have your volume controls. Now on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, here control or these controls here are for your cruise control system. Uh, if you wanted adaptive cruise, you would have to get to the option on screen now, which I believe requires you to get another option so it becomes expensive rather quickly. And then coming to this side of the steering wheel, if you push up on this, that is going to pick up on a phone call. You push down on this, this is going to hang up on a phone call. This is gonna pop up your audio sources here on your digital gauge cluster. And then that right there is to speak to the vehicle. And then you have this button here as well as the up and the down arrow. And both of these controls here are for your 11 inch digital gauge cluster. So we might as well move into our 11 inch digital gauge cluster. This is what the gauge cluster looks like. Over here, it gets you your different trip information stuff. You get your fuel range down there, transfer case status stuff, 
fuel gauge, lets you know who's buckled and who's not buckled. Then you have your tachometer, your digital speedometer readout at the center. You have your transmission status stuff right there. This is your coolant temperature. This is letting you know what the speed limit is of the area that you are driving in. And then down here, you have your odometer. Up top here, you have your ambient exterior temperature. And you can see your audio stuff right there. So if I click on this function here, it's basically gonna switch between some different gauge layouts here um, on the digital gauge cluster. So this, we're gonna start with this one. So this is your clean screen. It basically just has your digital speedometer readout and your speed limit sign. If I click this button right here, it's gonna bring me into the next screen, which is the one we were just on. Click in that one more time. Now, this is probably the screen that I would use because you have your uh, actual speedometer and your digital speedometer readout. And then on this side, you have your transmi uh, transmission status stuff, your tachometer, and everything else I kind of already went over. However, right there now is your trans fluid temperature. Now, uh, if I click this one more time, and then also that is your um, oil pressure. If I click this, it's gonna bring me into my Google Map stuff. So now my Google Map stuff is gonna be displaying here. And then also you can see the digital speedometer readout there. So this is what the, uh, basically, it's really cool. I like the way that that looks. And if I click that one more time, it's gonna bring me into this screen. This is kind of like your off-roading screen. You get your steering angle, transfer case status stuff, your pitch and roll stuff, you get your compass over there. So if you're going off-roading, this is probably the layout you'd wanna use. Um, clicking that one more time, you get then um, this screen, but you have your driver assistance stuff at the center of it. Uh, and then this is the clean screen. So personally for me, I kind of like this screen right here, but that's just my personal preference. Then you get your push button, start button. Moving over to here, you get your physical volume control knob. And then this comes standard with this uh, uh, trim level. And this is your 11.3 inch infotainment system with built-in navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. So going throughout this screen, up top here, you have basically, um, see where it says 4G LTE? That is, this vehicle comes standard with a Wi-Fi hotspot. So that is the signal for the Wi-Fi hotspot. That's the ambient exterior temperature. The current time, you have all of your different shortcut functions over here to shortcut you into your home screen, shortcut you into um, this screen right here. You get your audio screen, your navigation screen, your phone screen, and then this is a very important thing to learn right here. So see where it, uh, actually that kind of looks more like a Sierra in my personal opinion, but when you click on that, that brings you into your control and safety screen. So in the immediate screen, you get your traction control stuff, automatic high beam stuff, um, fog light stuff, and then if you click on this, it's gonna bring you into your more controls, like your door and window stuff, your light stuff for your headlights, fog lights, cargo lights, and your automatic high beam stuff. So as you may have been able to tell, you have no physical headlight control knob. So in order to go into your headlight stuff, basically let's say you are on the home screen, right? You can click this light button right here and then that is going to let you know that your headlights are in the automatic position or you can turn the daytime running lights on or you can turn the headlights always on or the headlights off. So this is a button you need to learn and this is a button you need to learn. And those are probably the two most important functions uh, to learn immediately when you get into this vehicle. But um, this is kind of what the home screen looks like. You can see all of these different things here. You can pop up your climate control stuff on the screen if you wanted to. I can kind of show you what that looks like now. That's what, uh, but I don't want it to get too loud. And then if you swipe over to here, you can pop up your off-road stuff. I wouldn't say the elevation is the off-road trim level personally, but you can see the Baja screen, terrain screen, and the overlanding screen. If you're gonna go off-roading, don't get the elevation, get the AT4, because I believe that one gives you the two-speed transfer case. Uh, and then you can see all the different controls. But coming down just a little bit more, this one being optioned with the convenience package, you get dual zone automatic climate control. So you get uh, your temperature readouts on the temperature control knob. This is what the stack looks like there. You can see all of those different features. And that's kind of about it for that. So this is your climate control stack here. Obviously, push button, start button. Uh, that comes standard. Two HVAC vents here at the center. This button is going to roll all four of your windows down, but it is not going to roll the windows back up. This is going to turn your automatic stop-start system on or off. This is your hazard button. This is your lane keeping button. And then this right here is basically you can wire in an auxiliary light, like a light bar or even a winch or something like that. And basically when you click on that, that is going to give the light bar power. Um, so that is gonna turn the light bar on or off. That is an auxiliary switch. And then you get a USB-A port, a USB-C port, a little bit of storage space down in here. You could set a phone. This is an iPhone 14 Pro Max 
four size reference and it, it's down in there no problem and then this is your transfer case selector so if you click here that's going to put you into two wheel drive high you click here that's going to put you into four wheel drive high but the observant viewer may be able to note that you do not get four wheel drive low you only get four auto uh, or auto four high two high and then if you twist on this that's going to bring you into your different drive mode so clicking all the way to the left you have your normal mode one to the right you get your off-road mode then you have your tow haul mode your terrain mode and then back to normal mode so uh, that is the different controls there that is what that does then you get your electronic parking brake here you have your transmission stuff over here and if you go into l i believe this is a gear limiter not a um you know upshift and downshift thing so Coming back a little bit more, you get two cup holders, a spot you could set your phone right there that would kind of look something like that. That's kind of a view of what I'm talking about there. And then you get a nicely padded armrest, some accent colored stitching, and when you open up the armrest, you get a divider that you can take out. And then down in here, I'm not sure how well it's gonna pick up on camera unless I illuminate it. You get a 12 volt power outlet. And this is your 12 volt power outlet down in there. So if you have a radar detector, you can still wire up your radar detector uh, with that switch there. And then coming to this side, you get a glove box that is not lockable. That is that. Here's a view on the passenger side. So the passenger side gets an A-pillar Opu handle. You don't get an Opu handle up here. And then with the convenience package, you get the auto dimming rear view mirror. And then you got your OnStar stuff basically kind of like your roadside assistance stuff. This lets you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. And with the convenience package, you get to the dual reading lights. So you can turn them on individually there. And then this light control right now, when it's flush in the center, when you open up the doors, the interior lights will turn on. If you click that to the left, now they will not turn on. And then all the way to the right is your instant dome light on button. It's gonna turn on all of your interior dome lights. And then that is let you know if your passenger airbag is on or off. I might have said that again. Uh, but coming over to here, also with the convenience package, you get the sliding visors. And then you also get the illuminated vanity mirrors as well. So you can see these lights come with the convenience package. You, I don't know if this uh, you get a vanity mirror, but I believe you do just without the illumination. If you don't get the convenience package, and then also these slide forwards and backwards for when the sun is in those awkward positions. You also get a clip here. You could set any small little paper product. Then these are basically your Bluetooth mic pickups for your Bluetooth phone. And then talking about seat comfort, in my personal opinion, being 5'9", about 155 pounds, I think these seats are very comfortable for somebody like me. I could do a long road trip in these. Seats are not too firm. They're not too cushiony as well. So they're just kind of right where they need to be. So I really like the seat comfort. Um, now I'm going to throw the Elevation Premium Package on screen right now. You can take a look. Um, so if you want the Elevation Premium Package or a fully loaded model, Model, you might want to look into getting that elevation premium package but now I'm gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen and you can take a look at whatever you want to the options that this vehicle has everything that you get as standard maybe the fuel economy stuff but I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP so the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Canyon elevation is spec is $43,385 and in my personal opinion I think that's a pretty decent price I mean yes it's not like a fully loaded vehicle but it pretty much gives you everything that you need and a little bit more and then also I did want to show you the camera quality here with the rear view camera it is very good in my personal opinion but I do want to show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video so this being a mid-sized truck you're not going to have as much space here in the rear for the rear occupants as you would in a 1500 series truck but that is to be expected right so as mentioned earlier you get an automatic down or automatic down rear windows they go all the way down however the rear windows are not automatic up so you have to hold them i know so difficult right then you get a padded armrest some accent stitching a spot you could set a water bottle as well as a speaker this is what the rear seats look like. You do not get a center fold down armrest. However, you can fold these rear seats up. It is a 60-40 split, 60% on the driver's side, 40% on the passenger side. And if you lift up on this right here, but you also lift up on the seat itself, that is how you get access into your under seat storage where you will find your jack. 
and other pieces there. You could set some, um, you know, jumper cables or something like that right here, whatever you want to set, um, as long as it's within the parameters of the size that you could fit there. But stepping into the rear seats, adjusted behind myself. I am five foot nine. I've actually got plenty of knee and leg room. Here's another view of the knee and leg room. And then up top here, you get an Opu panel, you get a dome light. Opu panel on that side as well. You do not get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. However, you do get one behind the passenger seat. You also get two cup holders back here, a spot you could set a phone, two HVAC vents, and with the convenience package back here, you get the USB A port, the USB C port, and the 120 volt household power outlet. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the rear seats. I will say, being 5'9, I've actually also have plenty of headroom and these rear seats are also comfortable so you know we've talked about the exterior we've talked about the performance and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior so i want to see what this thing's like to drive as i'm assuming you guys do as well so i'll see you guys in the driver's seat all right now on to the driving portion of the video take a listen This thing is much quicker than you would expect it to be. And I already know that there's gonna be some people like who watched the performance part of the video and immediately went to comment. I can't believe it only has a turbo four cylinder. They should have left the V6, etc. stuff like that, which I can understand your point. You know, um, you know, longevity of this motor has not been proven yet, uh, but I guess time will tell. But this thing is very, very powerful. It's not jolty, it's not like not smooth it is a very smooth powertrain from what I've, I've experienced so far i like the way that this thing goes over bumps i know it's got the off-road tuned suspension but i think that's actually better for on-road use at least it feels that way because anytime you hit a bump you almost like can't really feel the bump i mean you can feel the bump but it just it's this suspension soaks up the bumps very very well um and i also just really like the driving height of this thing it, it feels like right where i you know want to be it might not be as tall maybe actually it probably is right on par with like a 1500 series truck but because the truck isn't as long or as wide as like a 1500 um, i kind of like that better here a little tire skirt and that wasn't even floored so this thing is plenty plenty powerful believe me 7,700 pound max tow capacity. That is a ton of weight. And honestly, I could see how this thing would have no problem towing. I mean, it's got fantastic low end torque. I mean, fantastic. I would really, really like to do a towing test with one of these um, one day, you know, just for a video because I think it would actually do pretty darn well. But I'm going to basically straighten this thing out and basically just floor it. So for a truck, a mid-sized truck, it is actually pretty darn quick. And the brakes are also great. Now let's test the handling a little bit here. I mean, fantastic. I mean, for something with tires like this, it handled that turn very, very well. Now I'm just gonna do just a regular little acceleration onto the highway. We're gonna hear what this thing sounds like cruising at about 70 miles an hour. Take a listen to the road and the wind noise. Very well insulated from the outside world in my personal opinion. It cruises fantastic at 68 miles an hour. Um, suspension is very smooth. No sound from the tires really. And that's what's nice about these tires is they give you the off-roady appearance, but they are not obnoxious when, you know, city driving or highway driving, because that's what most of you are probably going to be doing anyway, is mostly city and highway driving and, you know, maybe the occasional off-roading. 
but um, you know if I was gonna go off-roading I'd probably want to look into stepping up to the AT4 just because that one has the two-speed transfer case again this one has the single speed transfer case so you know this is more of like a truck that looks cool can do some off-roading but it's not basically like a dedicated off-roader like the AT4 is or the AT4X uh, are so again, it all comes down to personal preference, but if you're not gonna be doing off-roading, this is a great truck for you. You don't really need four-wheel drive low um, if you're just gonna be, you know, just cruising and maybe not doing so much towing. Um, but if I was gonna be towing my boat out of a boat ramp, I'd probably want four-wheel drive low. But now, oh man, am I gonna be able to get all the way over? I hope so, let's see. I should be able to with the power of the Turbo Max. Should have no problem. All right, so very easy goes over the bridge joints very very nicely i was actually kind of surprised by how actually good the sound system was for this being the standard sound system not being a bose or any sort of upgraded sound system it actually sounds like pretty darn good you know i had to go into the settings first because somebody kind of tampered with the settings um, before i got to them so they were kind of off sounding to me anyway but i went in and i messed with the audio settings which i can show you here if you want to kind of test them out for yourself but go into your sound settings. And this is what I have it adjusted to right now. I probably turned down the treble a little bit, but uh, I noticed that the sound system sounded fantastic once you kind of messed with, you know, the sound settings and stuff like that. So for being a standard sound system, it sounds great. The truck drives great. I think it also looks fantastic as well. I really like how it comes with the LED lights, both front and rear as standard. I think that's great. That makes it look a little bit more premium from the exterior's perspective. And, you know, putting everything together for about under you know quite a bit under forty four thousand dollars a little bit above forty three thousand dollars i'd say that it is a good value for what it is however you know comparing this to the honda ridgeline i did a video with a honda ridgeline rtl a few weeks ago i can't remember what the price of that was but i believe it was about forty forty one thousand dollars and that one had leather it had the heated seats sunroof etc um but you know, it didn't have a factory two inch lift. It didn't have as much power as this. Obviously it doesn't have the, uh, as much capability as this, but I would say maybe the Ridgeline rides a little bit better on road because it's basically a minivan with a truck bed, which is kind of a good thing if you're not gonna be using your truck for truck like things. However, um, you know, this thing looks fantastic. It still cruises fantastic. Um, you know on the highway and around town and stuff like that gets pretty decent fuel economy as well and it's just honestly a overall you know great truck made in america so yeah that's about it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and i cannot reach my goal lamborghini huracan without your support so if you enjoyed the video if you learned anything from the video please just take a second to like comment and subscribe i would greatly appreciate it the likes and comments look very good for my channel in the youtube algorithm and that is what helps me grow um, but yeah again that is it for today's video i appreciate you guys watching i'll catch you guys in the next one peace